and welcome to Fresh Outlook, where we take a look at the most talked about topics of the week. I'm Nia Toski. As always, we thank you for your company. We have a busy show and some wonderful expert guests, so let's get right to it. We begin with the abduction of nearly 300 girls from a school in Chikok, Nigeria. Now, this story has sparked global outrage and drawn a spotlight on the terrorists who took them, Boko Haram. Let's take a look and talk it out. A worldwide social media campaign is underway. Nearly two million tweets with the hashtag bring back our girls. It's an all out effort to help rescue 200 schoolgirls abducted by terrorists in Nigeria. First Lady Michelle Obama tweeted this picture Wednesday morning saying our prayers are with the missing Nigerian girls and their families. It's time to bring back our girls. Celebrities from newsman Pierce Morgan to entertainers Mary J. Blige, Forrest Whitaker and Ricky Martin have taken to their Twitter accounts to raise awareness and pressure in international response. Even the girl from Pakistan who is fighting for human rights there, Malala, is asking leaders to save the stolen Nigerian girls. The U.S. has sent military advisors to Nigeria who will join with British and French counterparts to help officials there. The Americans have also pledged intelligence and surveillance assets to find the teenagers. We welcome to the show our expert panel of former White House aide Dee Dee Benke, Dr. Alan Sanders, professor of American politics at St. Peter's University, Dr. Bernard Freeman, director of the Zanzibar Program on Human Trafficking at Seton Hall University, and in our D.C. studios, we also welcome Tom Squitteri. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Now here's a number, more than 65 million girls worldwide are not in school right now. Now while this has been certainly a tragedy, it has also shed a spotlight on this growing global problem. Didi, your thoughts on uh, when you've seen all these celebrities take to this cause, which has been a cause for some time. Well thank goodness it had me, because this really has gone on for a long time, it's tragic. But I think we give a lot of credit to our country, because we've stepped in with social media, made a big splash about it, so it's kind of forced the Nigerian government to try to do something because they've been very laissez-faire about it. Even Angelina Jolie said it sickened her because they've done nothing. They've just let it go, unfortunately. But now with the international pressure, I think led by our country, something's being done, and that's good. And Dr. Freeman, this is your first time here on Fresh Outlook, so thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about who the Boko Haram are. A lot of people have never heard of them before. What is their political agenda? Well, Boko Haram is actually uh the latest of a long series of groups that grew up in northern Nigeria it goes all the way back to the 18th century. These are jihadist groups who are looking for independence, political independence, and a change in the uh, government and, and education in uh, northern Nigeria. Their name actually is not Boko Haram. That's the name that other people give to it. The name actually has to do, the name of the group has to do with a group that's propagating the uh, teaching and uh, uh, lessons of the Prophet Muhammad and jihad. It's a jihadist group and it's changed from the time that when it first started. Well, it's I want to talk about now. that the name Boko Haram. It translates uh -huh. uh, Western education is sinful. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about w what they hope to accomplish with the kidnapping of these girls, Dr. Saunders. Well, it's not clear what they aim to accomplish, but they're clearly opposed to a more secular kind of education. Um, they are uh, very uh, uh, fundamentalist in their approach, and they've radicalized. They used to be a more moderate force, but they've actually radicalized. Uh, they started out as a force that was basically against the Nigerian government uh, and the corruption and brutality of that regime. But they've radicalized, and they've become uh, jihadist and fundamentalist, and pretty much opposed to uh, uh, secular, uh, the secular world, which they believe the Nigerian regime is promoting. Uh, we want to check in with our guest, uh, Tom Squitteri, down in D.C. Um, why was the response to the kidnappings from the Nigerian government so delayed? In part because uh, there aren't a lot of good options on how to respond. Secondly, the task force and soldiers that they sent to that region about a year ago to work with local militia, uh, it, it succeeded in taking back some of the cities, but it drove the group into the bush, and they were unable to ferret them out there. Nigeria, like a lot of countries, uh, has difficulty in dealing with uh, terrorist groups within their borders, in large part because of the different ethnic makeups of the country. Uh, you have to balance out a lot of, uh, of factors when you plan a strategy. And of course, there's the inherent problem of a large country like Nigeria moving quickly and focused in a focused manner. Well, Tom, you talked about that a year ago. Um, we know that there were warnings beforehand. Why wasn't there any kind of a response before, in your, in your opinion? 
Well, uh, I, that's, a, that's a really a good question, uh, and that has to go into deeper into Nigerian politics, which I have to say the nuances often elude me because I'm not there now. Uh, however, that all being said, sometimes uh, if, if you can isolate a problem like this, as atrocious as it is, it's sometimes a wiser choice by the central government that they make at that moment. You know, there has not been a lot of visibility outside of Nigeria on, on just how terrible this group has been. You know, they, they slaughtered some schoolboys earlier this year. I think they buried some of them alive, for example. And there was very little publicity about that, certainly in the West and even within Africa. So with the visibility low of the atrocities, and it sees, falls into that category sometimes of one more group trying to destabilize a central government in a country that's, it, that's big and has multiple problems. Well, it certainly is see, interesting to see how the West is responding to this. Uh, Didi, you were shaking your head when, when yeah, you were listening I, to I Tom. Think because, yeah, I think the professor's right. I mean, they've operated in the dark so long, and they don't care. I mean, look, I mean, if they were going to do something about it, they would. How hard is it really? I mean, I, they said there's no good options. Really, the, the uh, military couldn't go in and try to uh, help these girls? Or uh, This has happened over and over again for a long time in this country. Because Hillary Clinton, Laura Bush, Michelle Obama, Angelia Jolie, and all these big names in America are really pushing it now because they see the face of these poor girls that are that were trapped, that are being treated badly, being forced to marry, being abused, I'm sure. You know, so the international community is outraged, and that's the only region Nigeria is even thinking about doing anything now. It's a travesty, but hopefully that'll change. Well, I was going to say, Nigeria certainly isn't the only country as well. I mean, we could go into Afghanistan and look at a lot of other countries, but it brings up an interesting point that you said, Didi. What can or what should the government do? Uh, Dr. Freeman, any thoughts on Well, uh, human tra trafficking of girls uh, is rife all over Africa. As the leader of this uh, group said, there are markets where you can sell a girl and, uh, for, uh, and get a decent amount of money. So the governments have to do things, I think, that attack the problem of human trafficking, not just this particular group. This, this particular group is actually just a window on, I think, on a much larger problem. Well, we said before 65 million girls are going without an right. education, uh, Dr. Saunders. Well, th this is an important moment. This is an education moment, and it's a time for the world community to come together to do something about human trafficking, which particularly affects women. Uh, many women in, throughout Africa are subjected to all kinds of abuse and all kinds of deprivations, and it's time to really go to it. It's a long-term problem. It's not something that will be solved by quick and easy military action, for instance. Uh, we certainly want to save the immediate victims, but I think uh, we should focus on what can we do long term to bring the world community together uh, to use financial incentives and any other kind of incentive to stop this. And, and Tom down in D.C., um, you know, it's certainly a, a tragedy as we've been talking about, but it is promising to see so many celebrities um, bring this, uh, this uh, subject to matter. But why have these atrocities gone overlooked for so long, do you think? Here in the U.S., let me let me uh, uh, specify that just a little bit more. Sure. Why, why does, don't, don't Americans, or haven't Americans, um, recognize this problem earlier? Well, two things on that. First, I want to uh, accent what was just said about this being an education moment. I fully agree. But now it's imperative that this education moment become an action moment as well. Uh, the visibility is up there, and people were aware of the problem. And for the first time, many people are aware of it. Americans are traditionally ignorant about world affairs, unless it involves sending U.S. troops to a country or if it involves a region of the world where their ancestors came from. That's been like this as long as I was a foreign correspondent. You have to learn to deal with it. That being said, there are important problems that will galvanize Americans, bipartisan action on the Hill across the spectrum, because there are certain fundamental atrocities, certain fundamental beliefs that span borders, span cultures, span religions. And this is an example of one of them. So I think that we could talk about the blind eyes that many people in this country may have had to the human trafficking, which is true, and to other problems. But I, I really think that, wow, we have an opportunity, sad as it is, to rescue these girls and, more importantly, rescue the millions of others who, who will be suffering from this in the future if the world does not act. Well, uh, Tom, you talked about being a foreign correspondent, and we know sometimes in news yeah. that foreign stories don't always translate to ratings here in the U.S. So how do we keep this uh, a topic that stays in the news? Uh, uh, yeah, I will, I will disagree with you a little bit on that point. I've always found that in my experience that when you write about humans, the things that we share as people, that those stories get attention and those stories 
get ratings or sell newspapers. Now, granted, there is a, a thing about it's called compassion overload or compassion fatigue. When people see story after story about people in need, they get tired of seeing it and they can't differentiate them between the latest tragedy. I'm not trying to be lighthearted about it, but that, that's a reality. It's an overload to people. But there is the other side of it that's what was once called the CNN factor, where you show pictures of people in Somalia and that galvanized uh, politicians to try to provide aid. The trick is, and the dangerous slope is, that the response has to be a wise response and not just a knee-jerk response to satisfy the people who say, let's do something now. Well, I was going to bring that point up as well um, in terms of uh, this all started with a hashtag, and now we have one million people who have, who have uh, uh, put that around uh, social media. But will this burst continue, do you think, Didi? Well, obviously they're short-term because they have these girls that are kidnapped, so that needs to happen. And then we capitalize on that. And in capitalize on that, there's a campaign then for the education. So there's a short-term problem and a long-term problem, clearly. But the hashtag in the social media has really made a big difference. Well, Dr. Freeman, uh, I'll ask you and uh, Dr. Saunders as well, do you think that this, uh, this hashtag is, and this w these one million views, do you think this is going to continue? Do you think that we can keep this momentum going? No, I agree with Mr. Scuteri. It may be like a CNN moment, and I think that governments have to have policies. One problem with the Nigerian military in this particular situation is the Niger Nigerian military has been uh, very, is incompetent and has been violent in the past, and that's one of the reasons why... there's a why, lot of corruption. Yeah, corrupt. That's one of the reasons why Boko Haram was able to uh, thrive, because the M M Nigerian military was so bad. So the Nigeria, other countries in Africa, in Asia, have to begin to develop real uh, long-term, daily policies to arrest human traffickers, prosecute human traffickers, and educate women in ways that will uh, not allow things like this to happen in the future. Dr. Yes. Saunders? Uh, I, I think uh, the problem is that very often we get very excited about a tragedy, a horror, uh, a terrible event, and then um, it inevitably fades. It's very important for people to keep focused on that. There are movements throughout the civil rights movement, the uh, movement to free uh, of Soviet Jews that kept the focus on the issues. So I think the social movement is very important, or the social media is very important to bring things to attention, but it's incumbent upon people to now group around uh, this moment and to actually uh, uh, further the cause and stay together. Uh, the media is uh, always dramatic, and so you should pick that moment and use it. And a quick question for everybody, a very uh, short answer we have to ask you. Uh, Tom, uh, what can we do to, act, to really help this campaign move forward? Uh, get the intelligence, rescue as many as they can and come up with a way to work with the Nigerian military to take out as many of these bad guys as we can. Didi? Yeah, well, I think Americans have done a great job, our country, I mean, with the social media to keep that up and to try to put pressure on the international world to put pressure on Nigeria. Lots of pressure. Uh, Dr. Saunders? Yes, I agree. I think uh, President Obama has taken the lead on this. He's uh, uh, sending uh, uh, help. Uh, and I think uh, many other countries are doing the same thing. And again, uh, this collaboration, I think, can be useful in the long term. And Dr. Freeman. Speaking as a Muslim, I would say Muslims should speak to other Muslims to get involved in condemning this kind of behavior. We thank you very much uh, for your uh, insights, everybody. And Dr. Freeman, we thank you for being here on the show for the first thank time. You. Don't go away, everyone. When we come back, we're going to talk about Alibaba. It's coming to America and could change the way we do business here in the U.S.